Okay, let's see. Let's go to this room. Right here. Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry. I don't know much about the Watchmaker. But, Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail... is... is Grandpa's name. Oh! He must have been talking about, like, the Grandpa that he's been talking about. If you do like his character saying, go to his characters, like, voices and stuff. Talks about, like, his Grandpa at one point. Grandpa? Do you mean... you're the Watchmaker's grandson? We haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa, because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Mm. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. <sighs> I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. Mm. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Oh, those voices. I heard some noises from the room. Origami Bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the Compass, Misha? The Compass is a ship bound for the New World. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger. Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the new world in the end. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. Yeah. I think I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Alright, let's go there. resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, Whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, 
he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side. And the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. <sighs> you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, man, that these are mean. <laughs> hey, don't tease. I was just being a bit sentimental. <laughs> Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Mm. Yeah. Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Penicone at all. Yeah. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll I'll remember more things if we go further. Mm. We're going to the opposite side, right? No, we should turn left here. There's something over uh -huh. here. Something feels different about this place. This is it. I remember this corridor. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. It was in that room that I saw him the last time. Log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a log book on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It it was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. Aww. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? 
he told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He's a train! Oh, gee. Could it be? The Astral Express. It's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Mm. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure. Appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead. But assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah, I think I can still find the way we took back then. All right. Oh, yeah. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hey, the shape oh, yeah. seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. All right. All right, one. Um. Yo. All right. On this one right here. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> really? <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Yeah, you're the only one still in the dark. Um, I'll say this for her. I don't think I know, too. March. Remember when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Oh yeah. Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. Mm -hmm. Oh, you! Oh, come on! A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message, left by someone 
for the nameless. Oh. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh, wait. Uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. Mm. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away? Yeah. And the whistle you heard. Was the sound of the express arriving at Penacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. Oh, no. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. Oh. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. So he's the true Watchmaker then? So you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. So like some kind of reincarnation? As for the child who has been with you. He's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. Mm. And this also marks the beginning of his journey. Devoted to the trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this little flame, which I so, so cherished. cherished. In, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, dreams. Hoping, hoping to pass, pass it, on it on to the, the nameless of, of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. Yeah. That kind of does make sense a little. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's, that's what, what every nameless has to go through. <laughs> but in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. Yep. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's... Nothing more, more than, than a baseless, baseless rumor. rumor. Mm. I, I left, left my, my homeland, homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. 
I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penicone, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you, for the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. Yeah, our time to shine. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. Oh, I just slept with him. <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Oh, fuck! He's giving it! Of course. We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. Yeah. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. All right. I keep skipping the damn thing. <laughs> Mikhail, where are you going? Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please, don't go! And if you must, please take me with you! Don't leave me alone! Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go! Board that train and start your journey! Yeah. Where are you going, Mikhail? I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry, not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of Trailblaze will continue. 
Yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. But why? Mm. When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Panacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Panacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How can I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Oh, now Gallander's here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but... You're the last remaining hero in Penacone. If you die too, the, the secret of Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacone, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Asdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So, a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember, Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that, too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? 
It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So your name should have been Compassy. And the watchmaker is just a nameless. Mm. So that is his pass. We've arrived at Dream Flux Reef. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. Oh, well, now we're walking. traveled far enough and it's time for a little break oh so we'll set out again when you're rested <laughs> no I'll stay here and then this is where it ends this is where it ends <laughs> What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you, Misha. <laughs> You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> oh. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands. Always pointing ahead. Oh. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Oh, yeah. Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Pentaconium Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Oh, yeah. Yo. Sunday's like, what? <laughs> I can't believe that Eon would cast a glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Hmm. Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps. 
perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen eons, who will hold the future of Penicone. Hmm. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penicone and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Panacone Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Ooh, so we're fighting. Since the future of the Stellaron, Panacone, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Oh, yes! Yes! Uh, eh, 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 eh. What was this? <laughs> oh, okay, let's test it out. All right, let's test your power. <laughs> Whoa, you just throw this hat? Okay. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. Alright, let's test this bitch out. Time to test our rapport. Alright. Dreams do come true. Enemy targets detected. <laughs> do you admit this crime? <laughs> Step up, let's see ya. <laughs> All right, normal attack. Okay, it's not be too serious. Enemy data sync net markers activated. Time for good old counter attack. In the mood for another beating? Time to mix things up. Great teamwork. All right. You can hurt me. Stay in step. The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. Oh, that is cool. Okay. Let's improvise. No one misses the Marstruck. We have the upper hand. Slice like a good, my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourselves. All right. Ready for another? <laughs> it's time. By the order of the execute, the Marstruck. <laughs> Stay in step. Let's improvise. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's check out everyone. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? Yeah. I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, in all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Yeah, we won't back down either. But if he says a gentleman, if, if evil, why so nice? I flex on him too hard with the peak swing, I guess, messing him around. I'm saying this. We won't back down. Yeah, you're right. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, 
We can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessors' long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. Yeah. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? Uh, what? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. I see. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true, but in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. Prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacony. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The mm. most Terrible form? Does that mean... Sam? The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. Oh. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Uh-oh. Time to fight! It is time! <sighs> I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone. Are you ready? A new yeah. Shoot sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me, like fireflies to a flame. My feet are stiff. May we meet, meet again, again in reality. reality. Came back to this? After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. Or salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Oh, dang. Well, I want to live. I'm never 
afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human. Though its definition escapes me, isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. The tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription, Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The Nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those Nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. <laughs> Let's get together and have supper again in hell. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. Well said. It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. Oh, uh, now we're back to her. I want to save this. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, becomes extremely spicy. <laughs> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. 
Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My... condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will Cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire, do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. All right, we're back to them. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony, a sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, Everyone on the planet became part of the family. Mm, do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? 
The family deliberately used the watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the emanator of the Nihility. Oh, that's why they didn't want uh, Akron there. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Bioris Commandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazerond, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation, and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain Eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum, and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgeroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the Propagation in Panacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? Yep. Uh, that part is true. I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. This is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Asdana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. Yeah. I have another plan. Ooh. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Oh yeah, that's where he came in and the General, our boy! Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Alright. The final battle begins. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? I'm not Robin. <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. 
I'll step up and take down the other son if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So... It's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. Oh, did it just die? Or oh, just ran away? I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. Oh, all the dead birds, goddamn. In this world. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Mm -hmm. oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. But why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. Yeah. Are we too late? Um, uh, I'll say this. This is funny. Yeah. I wonder how many tickets. Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about. <laughs> Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. I don't think I level up yet. Mm-hmm. The hat. Watchmaker's hat that we got. All right, I think I'm ready. All right, let's look around this place. Oh, gosh, the atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's Sunday right there. No one here. Where are those things? Robots. All right, give me a second. Let me fix this.
Finally, Jesus Christ. Okay, there. Okay, annoying. Alright, let's go over here. What's this? <laughs> They won't suddenly start moving, will they? Uh, oh, stop it! <laughs> Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. Okay, okay this one just... I forgot the word for this. Doing something. Praying to some kind of god or... Something worshiping. Feels off. We're in the right place, right? Yeah. There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? <laughs> he said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. Uh-oh, there he is. Uh, you scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the Eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the Dusk Wars, darkness veiled the sky and chaos consumed the Earth. Anna, the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. Yeah, the final battle begins. <laughs> yeah, ooh. Yo. They gathered nebulae and forged them into pinks thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. Stream four. All right. The are gathering around the frame. Are they expecting us to? Yeah. Ooh. Stay play at one. Oh, the prison. Where are we now? The atmosphere here. Looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Penagoni's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions, but now it looks like I'll be back. Bars again. <laughs> I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? 
Well, let's start with the time when Panacone was still a frontier prison. <laughs> Okay, can we do that in a second? Hold on. Right. Okay, okay. I'm tired of fighting. We don't got time for your bullshit. I want to start the fight. I mean, we gotta do this bullshit. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot to do now. AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. It's true that Hanunu was a legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. Oh wait, we're gonna do that again. I'll get that treasure real fast. Endeavoring to spread the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. Let's build another prison, not within the Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. Alright, uh, we have to fight a boss I now. You like this land of freedom on a scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. Hey, why don't we have to fight while enjoying the show?
For I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance in its completion. Where well, we have to fight, goddammit. The mood is set just when the show begins. Dreams do come true. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Another journey All begins. Right. Destined for oblivion. Stay in step. Let's improvise. Uh -huh. On the still waters of oblivion. Tedious. Oh, oh dang. Them get okay. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Spend freely. The dice have been bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Destined for oblivion. Stand down. Still waters of Lydia. <laughs> Take your positions. Dreams do come true. The mood is set just let the show begin. Uh -huh. Destined for oblivion. Tedious. <laughs> All will be revealed. In lunar flame. Blade of moon. <laughs> All in. <laughs> Let's improvise. I hit the mark. <laughs> Stay in step. <laughs> Head your bats. Uh huh. Free will, or was it on the still? Come on, finish this bitch. No one can restrain you anymore. You are free. Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war, the frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too... literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! Alright. These puppets. Where are they guiding us this time? Oh, they're telling us to go over there. <laughs> they transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the third and fourth days. All right, give me a second. Something happened. Okay. Where is this place for? Is it over there? Okay. All right. It is over here. Look, another frame. What the heck? Okay. Okay. We have more music. Alright. Let's go over here.
Ode to Fool. This must be the second act. Well, the surroundings are different from before. The stage decorations look a bit tidier now. Yeah, Behold more of light. The ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree, grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. Peace never truly graced land of the exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate, so please allow me to present it in allegorical form. Got your chest. Welcome to this mansion, dear outside. The land of the exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. There's more of you things around here. was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. Because my child, you cannot serve the old master. The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. We got all, all the way, all the way the fuck over there. God damn. Gopher Wood led the family to land of the exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages. Did Panacone earn its new name? The Land of the Dreams. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigators. Uh, you want us to help you? What do you need? Now just March is just playing along. I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me. Don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. Looks like we've gotta help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit. 
right? Okay. Either I shall be my own master, or I shall return to my former master. I shall not submit to a new master under any circumstances. Alright, let's we'll start with a happy. This puppet isn't responding at all. Did something go... A lot of anger. This puppet isn't responding at all. Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. Master is no longer here. I must seek a new master and serve them faithfully. Oh, okay. Either I shall be my own master. Either I shall. Okay, calm. Without a master. Who can grant me truth? Okay. Once, I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. My former master has long departed. Why do I still fear the remnants of his creation? Master! Oh, you will return in due course! And I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward for my loyalty! Master, now that you have gone, I shall wait no longer for my reward. I shall seize what is rightfully mine. <laughs> In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing? I shall sing for my new master, just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. Alright, we did the all. Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. Heed me, one and all. Your former master shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we shall attain true perfection. Cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another. Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. Yeah, this is what they call him for... <laughs> I'm not reading that. The or whatever it's called. <laughs> Okay, I don't care. On the still waters of oblivion. You dirty tricks already. Another journey begins. Destined for a blip. Stay in step. Ha! The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. 
That's half the work. The dice have been kept. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. On the still waters of oblivion. All right. Alas, they remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the Land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Betty comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. Don't forget to let your friends in on the action. Yeah, there's one over there. We got to go all the way over there. Jeez. They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody canon of law dictated the form. Thus, all mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. Oh, there's a music one over there, okay. This guy is really into these puppets. Yeah, okay, hold on. Stream four. Glean of old place. to order <laughs> oh gosh oh I get it now the last scene is all about singing the praises of the order and the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes yeah this is the concluding act of this play I have showcased the past and present of Panacone Hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. Yeah. Now, I shall reveal its future to you. That's not gonna happen. Ugh. Okay, where to go? Stream four. Let's go this way. The people lack force. We will make choices on their behalf and bear responsibility. Without a king, we shall protect the weak and stand against the mighty. Stream four. Gleam the bold place. And standing against the mighty. I go here. Maybe this will help me or something like that.
Oh no, that's something else. Okay, um... We gotta go over there somehow. Alright, move that over there. Do this. Alright, we'll be right there for a little bit. Oh shit, I did not mean to do that. That's probably fast, right? Time to test our rapport. Let's improvise. I hit okay. The mark. Another journey begins. Destiny for oblivion. Tedious. Stay in step. Hedge your bets. Spin freely. Stand down. Blade of moonlight. All will be revealed. In lunar flame. Okay, easy. Don't forget to let your friends in on the action. <laughs> but all right, what's over here? Okay. And now we're over there. Hey, aren't we supposed to kick off a short story and have a fight here just like we did in the previous acts? Why aren't any of these puppets saying anything? Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? Ah, uh, do we have to do that again? Jeez. Satisfied, Jesus Christ! Farewell, former king. We no longer have need for a king, for we have become kings of all things. Okay. Farewell, it won't change. It won't do anything. I can't change their emotions. Yeah. You can't change them. What does that mean? My apologies for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final rite. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. Yeah. Every will or was it still water? Tedious. Dreams do come true. The dice have 
bust. Oh or my god. Ready for death. <laughs> Another journey begins on the still waters of oblivion. There. God damn so long. In the hushed expanse of a nocturnal reverie, I leave faint traces behind. No need to remember me. What is mine shall wane. While you shall transcend its delicate nature. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event. The Charmony Festival. Yeah. Oh. Congratulations, there we go. Hmm. Alright. The next charity begins. The final one. Finally. Oh, shoot. We're in our final stage. They imbued the world with meaning, perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. Yeah. It's gonna be a big, crazy battle! That marked the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberated in the Hey, now okay, that was cool. Look, there he is. That concludes everything related to the order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacone Theater, the very core of the sweet dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival. And the very place where the future of Penacony shall be determined through conflict. Okay, and the very place where you are scheming get smashed and smith smithereens. Why did you buy us to this duel? Where is the sterile? Oh, why am I not seeing it? Okay. I'm saying this. Your unwavering faith in the Trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness. Especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, 
A cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that. They would just be toys for the eon. It seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen eon or become one myself. Hmm? My sole objective is to create a paradise free from eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? Oh, we're gonna fight. Time to test the our eons with great might. Under the banner of the all things in the cosmos. Take your positions. All right, we're almost there. Dreams do come true. Another journey begins, destined for oblivion. Hey, hey, yeah. All right, almost done. Okay. Ooh. Time for a nap time. Stay in step. Let's improvise. On still waters of oblivion. Hedge your bets. Uh huh. Take your position. Huh. Come on, I don't got all day, you bastards. Yeah! Take that, you bitch! I already know your decision. I now permit you to gaze into the sun. On these 107,336 stones, the almighty and powerful strings of harmony are at my disposal! Uh oh. Supreme tuner! Harmonious choir! Lost souls! Come and meet your master! Oh, the dude. of the harmony? So, the true purpose of the Charmony Festival is to usurp it? Seems like it. Oh shit, okay. Awaken from your dream. Sure, I'll play, play our own now. Let the show begin. It's on me. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Disorder. Watch your noise. Alright, we gotta do our best to take this motherfucker out. No dirty trick again. Why is it perceptive as you are? Answer me this. Why could the harmony and the order merge into one? Your bets. Spend free. Maybe it didn't care enough. Because neither side could tolerate discord. Oh, dang. Watch your head. Again. Keep up with me. Wake up. The dice have been bust. 
Or maybe I'll take it off! Yeah! It too shall fall. Take that, you bitch! That'll take more than You got your ass beat. Free will, or was it fate? Huh? I'll take the lead. Listen up! Let's play our own. Let the show begin. Yeah. Oh, now that you're doing that bullshit again. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Our right, shield. <laughs> Dusted for oblivion. No dirty tricks, all right. Watch your head. I'm okay. Team together. Keep up with me. Wake up. Okay. No dirty I'm tricks. Fresh. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh. Another journey begins. On the still waters of a flip. Disorderly noise. Again? Head your bets. Oh, dang. Again? Oh, shoot. Watch your head. I'll take the lead. Listen up. Again? Enjoy eternal peace. Well, come on. <laughs> Spin freely. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Let's play our let the show begin. I hit the mark. Ah. Just for I weep for the departed. Take this, someone. Don't let the song distract you. Listen up. Now we won't. <laughs> and the shit again. Free will, or was it? Huh. Sure, I'll play along. Well, I it's need shield here. Maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Wake up. Disorderly noise. No dirty tricks. Sink into a dream. Spend freely. I'll take the lead. Still the same. Watch your head. Oh, look to me. Head your bets. Huh? The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Disorderly noise. Listen up. Let's play our let's All right. Begin. Drop it. We're almost there. I'm fresh shot. That's better. Don't worry. It's just a no dirty tricks, all right. Watch your head. 
Watch your head. Another journey begins. On the still waters of oblivion. Disorderly doors. No dirty tricks, all right? Keep up with me. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Enjoy eternal peace. I'm okay. Destined for oblivion. Alright, there. All in. Weakness is not defined by you. Bust. I see this. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. I'm finish these motherfuckers. Oh, we're almost there. Spend freely. Not even. Oh, not to me. Free will, or was it the still waters of oblivion? I'll take the lead. Oh, Had your best. Play our own. Let the show begin. It's on me. All right, there. Ah, oh, gosh. The time has come. Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods. Oh. Done, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spirits. Hear my word. Show no mercy. Yeah, but finally here. Wake up! Wake up! Hey, wake up! <laughs> the sun's frying your butt. <laughs> huh? Are you all right? Can you hear me? Do you remember your name? Uh. Didn't I shut the sun out of my eye, out of the sky? Uh, kind of. It was General Ching Yuan who helped us shoot it down. Yeah. In any case, since you remember what happened just now, well, that's put my mind at ease. What happened while I was out? Uh, it's a long story. Simply put, Don Hung used the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath when we were in the middle of a fierce battle and summoned the General to help us just in time. And then we returned to reality. Look, this is your room. Everyone else has also returned from the dreamscape. Himeko and the rest are at the lobby discussing matters with the General. And now that you're awake, we should tell the crew that you're alright. Come with me. <laughs> Not going to come chat with you. Enemy tag with this mark will share a... Ooh. It's me, sleepyhead. Oh, it's Black voice. Swan. Is that Black Swan? Yeah. Hey, where are you going? Oh, there she is. Right there. Hey, we meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? Nothing, Miss March. I noticed she was awake and wanted to check to see how she was doing. Though the strike from the General was timely, its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably suffer. But, luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Thankfully, I managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Oh, so that's what happened! Uh, thank you, Miss Black Swan! Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Of course not! But you're not planning on doing something like last time, are you? <laughs> Why would you think that? I've never harbored any ill intentions. 
Well, not when you were around, anyway. Himeko and Mr. Yang are probably still busy. Let's go look for Don Hung first! Yep. Oh, ah, yep, yeah, there they are. <laughs> you know, it's the cowboy. Still talking to that cowboy. You're awake. How do you feel? Okay. Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. I'm fine, thank you. No, huh? I'll say this. <laughs> Don't worry. She's been up and about for a while now. But hey, Don Hung, why don't you introduce this cowboy to her first? Allow me to introduce him to you. This is Boot Hill, a galaxy ranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just came out of nowhere. During our pursuit of a certain person, we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by Mr. Sunday. <sighs> Which is why we sought you out. To help the Astral Express save the world together. No need for thanks. Now the Galaxy Ranger's principle is correct every injustice one sees. That's how you lot in the Sienjo put it, right, Don Hun? Uh, more or less. Wait, hold on a sec. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the Express? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh... Um, who was it again? Uh, Don Ho, do you remember? Um, come on. Don't keep me in a suspicion, yeah. Oh, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. Weird. A neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It... Hmm. I can't seem to remember either. Uh, what's going on? God, heck. Forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a minor scoundrel. Unimportant. Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together the story anyhow. Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. Everyone, let's hurry up and look for Miss Himigo, shall we? She's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about her well-being. You're right. Let's head to the lobby then. Alright, let's head there. I don't think we already know. Akravan. Yeah, that was probably her. Oh wait, I want to buy something. I don't think I ever buy something in there. Did I ever buy something? Yeah, I want to buy your drinks. Okay, I have. Wait, the IPC is here. The black armor. Oh, yay! Jin! They're with the general! Yeah! <laughs> That's alright. In these times of conflict for the sake of utmost safety, it is only right that the Alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the Astral Express. We must not allow you to take unnecessary risks. Furthermore, despite the IPC's eagerness for success, it prioritizes peace above all. And the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, peace for Penacone is within reach. <laughs> you flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, 
This sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Well, would you look at that? Here comes the big hero. Yay! Uh... <laughs> okay, I'll say this. <laughs> if it isn't the galactic baseballer, a hero with unparalleled insight. Are you okay? I heard you couldn't wake up. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There's nothing wrong with her. She practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. <sighs> it's a long story. But at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. Thanks to General Jing Yuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Uh, he used that tuning on us too! Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now, he was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have easily taken us down without so much as lifting a finger. Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? It's complicated, but in a nutshell, he's now the former Oak family head. Really? The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Panacone split, citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Pier Point. The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs on both moral and rational grounds. Everyone really has their own agenda, after all. Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> Why the sigh, General? I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time, everyone. The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC and Pentacoin, so there's no reason not to welcome you. Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. So <laughs> I'll shoot. Well then, we shall oblige. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. <laughs> Not to worry. Himako and I will take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and explain the situation. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welt and me? Or have you got other plans? Mm -hmm. Um... Guess I'll go. <laughs> Great. Although I'm not too sure of the reason, the representatives from the IPC have insisted on her presence. Allow me to lead the way. Follow me, please. All right. The negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please follow me. Yeah, I think I should go over there. Is there a way to go down, right? I had to go one of those doors again.
Oh yeah, the elevator. Dang, there's a lot of treasure chests around here. Mr. Aventurine and Miss Topaz are here too. Oh, and who is that over there? Ah, not the radio. Intelligentsia Guild's Dr. Ratio. This assembly is quite something. Yep. It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. It has. I would also extend my sincere thanks to you, General of the Lawfu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh, looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. Sure, leave it to me. In summary, that's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Peniconi sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Peniconi. Okay, that's cool. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. Yeah. So the ITV does uh, does see the bigger picture, huh? What's in it for you guys? And then we happen to look at a hint for nothing. Well, to be honest, it does nothing to benefit the IPC. But it is extremely beneficial to the long-term development of the entire universe. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Peniconi. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration, offering technical support for the reconstruction of Peniconi. The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Skrullum. Enlighten us, please. Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate. Mm. I will enter a state defined as imagination. Every time within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame might represent the essence of intelligence. A cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me. Desired, but unattainable. But after learning of Peniconi's accomplishments, I have come to realize that the flame is not beyond my grasp. Mm. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the Simulated Universe project, and instead assist the Intelligentsia Guild as technological consultants in the research of the Dreamscape and Memory Zone, so that these assets may be better used to serve humanity. Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through the IPC, and they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. Mm. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Peniconi. The cosmos's brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. Yeah, so a big win for everyone? But... Uh, never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. <laughs> no wonder everyone insisted that she be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Pentacone's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiations. Looks like Pentacone's future is decided. 
I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew is concerned about? Peace is our greatest wish. Beyond that, we desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. You may now depart with peace of mind. The Alliance will deal with all subsequent procedures. Alright, sometime later... If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penacony. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Hmm. Sounds good to me. You two head back to the Express first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan, you have a matter to discuss with me, yes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing escapes your attention, Miss Navigator. He really just came out of nowhere. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, she and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penacone has come to a fruitful end. Panacone's journey ends here. I guess it was pretty fruitful. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's talk to these guys. Well, seems the dust has finally settled, no? Well done, friend. This is all due to your heroic deeds in Penacone. Everyone's been moved by your integrity and selflessness. I am truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Penacone. The cosmos's brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. Alright, let's go to the express. The navigation meeting is about to start! We're all waiting for you! Alright. When did the express become so lively? Yeah. Everyone's present. Let the navigation meeting commence then. There's some meeting to decide our next stop. <laughs> How we doing this? By show of hands. Hold your horses, cowboy. It's for those to decide. <laughs> I'll shoot. I'm just catching a lift. Don't sweat it. Why do you keep doing this? Wait, hold on. I'm gonna start over. Fuck this. I'll be back. It's for those to decide. Okay, uh... I'll say this, yeah. Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. Wait, for real? Okay. As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now. But, Miss Black Swan, you better not use your Memo Keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> Understood, Miss Marge. I promise you, you'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out! Alright, alright! Now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting! Firstly, Pom Pom wishes to thank everyone! If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Penacone, Pom Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone! What they had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes! And it was thanks to all of you! Thank you, everyone! Yeah, no problem. Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka. Mm. A planet composed entirely of water. Many aquatic races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable, nameless Mikhail. Mm. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Welt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster, and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. Mm. The third choice is Edostar, 
a planet nestled within a vast ion storm region, currently under assault by the Antimatter Legion. However, the distress signals from there have recently ceased, prompting the IPC's wish for us to check in on the situation. Oh, really? The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the Morning Actors Troupe. Oh, dang, that's a lot of options to this ship. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing stars already. Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit. And then, we'll put it to a vote. Um, oh my gosh, I can't even make my mind, though. If that's the case, how about we go to Edo Star first? If that planet really is in danger, then we should go help them out. March is right. Though the fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But I still think we should investigate the situation there. You and Don Hung make good points. I'll throw in a vote for Edo Star too. If that's the general sentiment, then we should indeed investigate. I vote for Edo Star too. All right, we'll go there. Four votes for Edo Star. One vote abstained. Looks like we have a winner. Next stop, Edo Star. Then this navigation meeting is adjourned. I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. There's still some time before the jump. What should I do? Yeah, what should we do? <laughs> How about a chat? Over here. Oh. Alright, give me a second, hold on. Alright, let's talk to Black Swan. Oh, you're here. Seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. Oh, uh, well, why is it deep now? The How music. about it? This journey of beautiful dreams. Was it to your liking? Okay, it was interesting. I can feel your obvious excitement. That means your memories will also become even more beautiful. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? I'm quite eager to have it back. Oh. Oh, well, that card. Mm. Oh? Hmm. What happened? Never mind. I just... Stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone, but merely an empty light cone. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time? And I procured a few trinkets from your companions? Their functions are similar. This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. But this is not its most intrinsic function. Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. Mm. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form. And then, allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us, or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. 
You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this portal. Hmm. Which is why you want to collect my memory? You're making me bless. <laughs> Say this. <laughs> How adorable. But do you know the deeper meaning behind it? The reason is simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. Ooh. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> Patience, my friend. I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Really? Turn Aww. around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination, all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm looking for an opportune time. A time when you're totally at ease. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. How about one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then... <clears throat> The express is about to make the jump. Please be seated and hold on. I didn't talk to the others yet. <laughs> it looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for us. Why don't we just leave it at that? For ah, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great significance to me. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory. The kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly on Klopoth's anvil, before vanishing in the blink of an eye. The dead and those fated to die remain in their eternal slumber, while the living find solace in deep sleep. All clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era, all for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish. The silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Yeah. Hawkeye Star Wars. The adapter. <laughs> what the heck is this? What is this? Can I leave all? Well, let me skip. Goddamn. Okay.
but it's just like a story now. <laughs> I didn't talk to the other characters. Stars streak the sky tonight. If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So, then, it's time to tell you a little bedtime story. Well, let's start with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. What the heck is this? But, don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. There's still a glimmer of hope, and that's why I'm here. Next, I'll use this empty light comb that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. Are you ready for it? Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy ranger named Acheron showed you a way out. Hmm, yeah. When you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a confrontation with a Venturine, an IPC representative. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Acheron appeared again and helped you. After that, you saved Firefly and explored Panacone together. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo and accidentally entered a child's dream. Yeah. There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan, but that resulted in an accidental death. Even more unsettling, you soon encountered another murder. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the Watchmaker from Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as an emanator of the Nihility and unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan and opened a passage between the Sweet Dream and the original Memory Zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. As well as the truth about the Dreamscape, the Stellaron, and the Bellboy. <laughs> you split up with Sunday and Robin, looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda. And you had to engage in an ultimate duel on the stage of the Charmony Festival. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. You emerged victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order, and Panacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Panacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual, haven't you? The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, Hides in this story. Um. It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but he didn't lie in this matter. In addition, 
Death and dormancy do arise from the same concept, don't they? This is not the fatal variable in your adventure. Take your time and think it through. Um... Was it the hotel? Little Misha. Or should I call him? He is only a segment of memory in a dream bubble. But his ambition for the trailblaze led him to leave the bubble and embark on a grand adventure in Panacone. Well, Misha is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the trailblaze. There's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? Yeah, that's true. The answer is simple. He is the one fatal variable that contradicts all our known information. This means that you, who wholeheartedly believe in this memory, are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. Wait, are you serious? Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find our answers there. The train is about to make the jump. Five, four, three, two. Oh, we're back this here. Way, darling. All right, we'll follow her. All oh, they. Right after everything was okay, we're end up here. God damn it! Ah. Ah. Not another one. Oh. You don't remember us? Thank you so much, Black Swan. <laughs> Finally, I can breathe a sigh of relief. So, uh, Santa, yeah. I understand you must be confused, and we'll do our best to shed light on the situation. However, before that, it's essential to know that... What? This place is the rift between dream and reality. A place reserved only for those who have awakened from Anna's dream. Anna's dream? Do you remember Sunday's ambitious plan? He intended to harness the power of the Stellaron, the collective will of over 100,000 Oak family members and the desires of everyone in Penacone to usurp the harmony and restore the order. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. From the early days of our journey into Asdana, we were already affected by the Stellaron. That strange dreamscape where we met. Maybe it was a sign that your thoughts were beginning to drift away. Okay, all this is just a dream then? Did I also, uh, did I fall asleep on the Astral Express then? Now I'm back at the beginning of the story. I'll say this, this one's interesting. I don't think the goal of the Order was to put everyone into a deep sleep. Quite the contrary. They used the Stellaron to catalyze the leakage of Astana's Memoria into the material world, allowing the dreamscape to blend with reality. Oh, okay. And that included a lot of Memoria from the Beyond the Sky Choir. As time came and went, the dreams eventually became indistinguishable from reality, and reality became an illusion. People think they are awake, but their spirits have long since stepped into the Temple of Order. This is what makes Anna's dream so powerful. In this paradise governed by the Order, everyone indulges in their delightful dreams and lives happily ever after. 
I believe what you experienced in the sweet dream, except for that flaw, was real. Only in this way could you reach the destination, lifting the crisis in Panacomi and embarking on your next trailblazing expedition. If it wasn't for Acheron's plan, we might have been trapped in this dream forever. Mm, I see. Fortunately, while the path of the Order governs all things, it can't affect the Nihility. I came to realize this when the Dream Master tried to expel me at any cost. Mm. This is also why you felt a sense of peculiarity when traveling with her. Well, I'm not as fortunate as she is. Even if I'm a memo keeper, I was still influenced by the power of the Order and fell into hallucinations. However, thanks to your memories, now we still have a chance to turn the tide. For mortals, even if they possess the great power of a path, they can't create a flawless world like gods do. Mm. That's why there was a flaw in your dream. In other words, once you have realized the world is not real, you'll have a chance to break free from the dream. The flaw in your dream lies within Misha, who could have never appeared in reality. When I turned the pages of your memories, I realized that I was in an illusion too. Now Sunday oh, has usurped the power of the Harmonious Choir through the Charmony Festival. As Donna has thus fallen into Anna's dream, transforming everyone equally into the notes of the Eon. Failure doesn't mean weakness. Only the strong can gather the will to resist the Order and try to break free. We still have a chance, though. To make it happen, please, Black Swan, guide us to those with a strong will. All right, please come with me. These people are... They're the ones who accept Anna's dream and indulge in their happy illusions. We have no means to wake them up now. Not even your clockwork will do the trick. Ah. However, there are still other things we can do. Let's keep going. All right. Okay, there. We're not doing all that. Oh, Robin. Here we are. It's... Robin? Finally, you've arrived. Let me introduce you to Robin. She woke up from Anna's dream by her own will, and it's this tough lady who led us here with her song. Oh, I see. I woke up for the same reason as all of you. In the dream, I experienced something that could never occur in reality. Are we going to lock it up in a cage? I want to see it fly freely in the sky. Without us, this bird would be too fragile to survive on its own. Do you want it to die? No, but... Then, let's take care of it together until it can return to the sky. Uh, uh huh Birds have wings because they're meant to fly. Even if they may crash on the ground one day, they shouldn't be trapped in a cage. <laughs> Birds belong to the sky, so we should help them return there, right? The illusion was so impossibly blissful that I realized it was just a dream. And this is our final hope. Anna's dream is founded upon the Harmonious Choir. Namely, everyone shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Pentaconi merge as one. At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. And in order to destroy it, we must make everyone in Penacony want to wake up. Mm -hmm. Now comes the tricky part. How do we do it? Yeah. Oh shoot. Goddamn. Human 
Women's yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession, leading them to subconsciously resist the harsh reality. Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where she was completely unguarded, guiding her to uncover the truth herself to make her regain her consciousness. However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, that would be nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I'm afraid it's almost as difficult as resurrecting an eon. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. Hey, they here. Dahan and the Boot Hill. This is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? You woken up too? <laughs> Thanks to Black Swan. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers in Panacone too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, those who possess a strong will, like you, will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. However, Awakening a mere handful of individuals is insignificant compared to the vast number of people immersed in the dream. We must find other ways to awaken the free will of millions of people within a short period of time. If breaking through from the inside proves challenging, we can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. As Donna is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as Synesthesia Dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. At this very moment, there is only one dream encompassing the entire Asdana system. So, you mean... If we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core. However, those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. The real challenge is, how can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short period of time? <sighs> Looks like the Jadab Kiss of Allying Oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. Hmm, got something? Keep your wants a lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother the Sienjo Alliance for such a tiny request. You, you want thousands of people with unwavering free will? <laughs> That's easy. Just leave it to us Galaxy Rangers. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. And that's why we have a tacit understanding among us. Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I returned to you. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger and that it can only fulfill its purpose when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact, worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero. And in the direction it falls, countless meteors will streak across the sky. Those meteors? Galaxy Rangers, coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose, without questioning the cause or counting the cost, because we abide by a common principle. The shooting stars of the hunt only descend on the longest night, and with them comes the dawn. We've stayed silent for far too long. Now, it's time to remind all the cowards, oppressors, and villains of the universe of our presence. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. 
Yeah. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine-tune the slumbering souls with the Song of the Harmony, interrupting them with the discord of Trailblaze, and guiding them towards reality. It's true that some people are born strong, and others are born weak. If the Trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the Harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of Penacony themselves can be the saviors of their homeland. Their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, I'm willing to instill courage in all those who need it. This includes my brother as well. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. Your plan sounds well-conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. The flaws rooted in human nature can't be eradicated overnight. Do you believe these efforts alone are enough to convince everyone to choose the right path? I agree with you, Black Swan. That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path, but to inspire them to save themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. The final step in destroying the sweet dream will be my responsibility. That's a relief to hear. <sighs> now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield and pose a grand finale. May I have a moment alone with you? There's one more thing I need to explain to you. Hey, what is it? This grand festival is drawing to its close. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Penacony. Whatever we face, I'm prepared. This is where Firefly almost discovered the truth. I'll say this. I have faith in you. However, before we depart, there is one more thing I must tell you. There's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream and find the key to breaking free from the dream. All because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. Oh. She awakened from the dream ahead of others discovered the Express amidst the stars, and brought us valuable information about the remnants of the Order. She may have been aided by the script, and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the dream pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way. A real death. Oh. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Are you ready? All right. Very well. Now, please close your eyes. Oh, dang. Okay, you know what, let's use this. That might feel like... Mm, shields. Do we got any fire characters? I don't know, 15. You know what? We're just gonna do this. We're just using this. Oh. How long has this rain been ongoing? If I remember correctly, 
that has lasted for decades, or even centuries. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. But thankfully, we've guided those lost souls to their lives beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they won't be reduced to puppets of the nihility in their death. You see, the shadows on the sea have vanished. Do you remember? He once said that the sky would clear when the regrets of the departed had faded away. But it's still raining. Oh yeah, I just realized that those shadows over there are all together. That just interesting. I know. So, why is all this? Why did this rain choose me? Because someone's regrets haven't been fulfilled, perhaps. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the past writers, they emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they have journeyed with me for such a long time. Yes. Are you watching over me? This is my duty as Acheron the Watcher. Acheron the Watcher? I'm guarding the path to the abyss of the Nihility, guiding every soul reluctant to become one with it. Back to this side. But. If this is what the departed ones expected, should you try to change it? I don't know. But someone once told me that when the inevitable moment came, he hoped that someone would stand at his grave and place a bouquet of flowers. Even if it doesn't make sense, at all. Some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. I have experienced that much already. Please extend your hand and then close your eyes. I'll carry your wish with me and fulfill it. Only then will I be able to put an end to the final regret by the Dead Sea. Do I See them again? Yes, that is certain. Because it was you who told me about the Express, your two former companions. The expedition cut short by the swarm, your narrow escape from death, and your encounter with the Galaxy Rangers and Pemicone, the hometown to which you could never return. Yeah. For countless times, I got rejected by the family and had to pass it by. But I knew that my companion was still there. Um, oh. Okay. Are you still there? Oh, it's him. Take my hand and come with me. We. Oui. Leave this place. You'll embark on a long, long journey. 
shrouded in darkness. But fear not, as a touch of red will be awaiting you at the end of the path. That's the color of existence. Follow it, and it'll guide you and illuminate the way out. By doing so, you'll eventually reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Thank you. May death be the end of your boundless dream, guiding you back to the waking world. Welcome to the horizon of existence. This place is one of the thousands of manifestations belonging to the sleeping and shapeless. And it's also an exit out of the nihility for the awake ones. Let's bid our final farewells here. All right. We're in this place. Always distinguish between reality and imagination. All right, Gray. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. May your schemes be forever concealed. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. To the imperfect tomorrow. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slumber? Why does life slumber? We don't know the answer yet, but we're about to awaken from this dream. Or perhaps such is the answer itself. Leave this place, return to where you belong, and Awaken Panacone from this dream. Will you come with us? As I said, our plan is not about convincing everyone to choose the right path, but about inspiring them to save themselves. So, when will people actively save themselves? The answer is, when they are in desperate situations, like a drowning individual in the deep sea. When one's body and mind bear immense pressure, agony, confusion, and despair will follow. I firmly believe that. The fragility of humankind often freezes them in their tracks, but in truly desperate situations, they will strive to save themselves. And now, Panacone has enough heroes to lead them forward. through this inherent self-centered instinct that people exert their utmost effort even when they know their struggle is fruitless as absurd as it may seem it's their resistance as for now it is time to guide them not as a savior but as a nameless among those mortals in this way you will reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. The rain is intensifying. Before we part ways, please allow me to ask a few final questions. Okay. So far, you have forged unbreakable bonds with numerous individuals and entities in the sweet dream. Might I ask? If you fear severing these bonds with your own hands? I, uh, I feel no fear. If there is a vast, lifelike dreamland that is virtually indistinguishable from reality, a realm without death, where everyone can attain the happiness and fulfillment they deserve, living blissfully ever after, I would ask, would you wish to stay? 
I would never ever wanted to live in a dream. Imagine if this splendid dream were fated to fall apart. Friends, family, strangers, followed by the gentle breeze, soaring birds, the stars, and ultimately yourself. Everyone and every face they remember. The joy and the heartaches, the vows sealed and those left hanging. All will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right from its inception, I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? I would blaze a trial trail without hesitation. I'm glad. The answer itself doesn't matter. What matters is that you've made a decision. Listen, touch, and ponder. And therein lies the sensation. Cherish it, because that's what makes us exist. Such is the only answer humans can offer when facing the nihility. If the nihility represents the primal fear of life, rendering any lofty convictions insignificant under their imposing shadow, then behind this shadow, there must exist the most fervent source of light in the world. Just as every life that edges closer to death fervently approaches the end of the nihility, we must pursue that primordial light. Now come to think that you exist in the nihility, and you watch over others to depart it, such a task is absurd and meaningless. Nevertheless, someone had to do it. As for the meaning you mentioned, even if it's a meaningless task, I've come this far, haven't I? Even if the future of the world may not even belong to you. It may not belong to me, but it definitely belongs to someone. What hardships you must have experienced. In that case, allow me to do something you must do. Please, tell me your name. Perhaps my existence will vanish in the next moment. Nobody will remember this conversation or your answer. But I believe that your name should be remembered. And this universe will remember it as well. Some things are difficult to recall, yet there are others that I find challenging to forget. Such is memory, a creation of the past that blossoms into significance in the distant future. I remember that marks the start of my journey, the origin of the vibrant red hue in my life and the most fervent element amidst every tempest. That's my name. Ryder Ozen Mori. May. Dang. The golden dream is getting restless. In the coming long nights, I'm afraid you will face many setbacks and witness many tragedies. And in the end, you will only see in black and white. But please believe me, that in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting red. And when you make a choice, it will appear once more.
Wow. What you must do is ponder its significance, then return to the waking world. Oh, everyone. That's where we all find our answers. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to fight your ass again. Have you broken free from the dream of order? What the fuck? Let's show them a wake up call. All right. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Disorder and noise. Without order, how can the weak be righteous? The elder. Oh. Sure, I'll play along. Another journey begins. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. For oblivion. <laughs> Nobody resonates. All things are part of the melody. Keep up with me. Yeah, shut up. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. Head your bets. Huh? No dirt. Watch your head. So the dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Still waters no receive. Yeah. yeah. More than medicine. I'll take the lead. Listen up. Sure, I'll play along. Noise. <laughs> Free will, or was it? Time for a shot. Don't worry, it's just a scrape. Disorderly noise! Aim together! Hedge your bets. Spend freely. Keep up with me. Alright. Wake up! No dirty no tricks. Alright, this might take longer, so. Spend freely. All right, we're almost there. Take that, you bitch! Robin, is that you singing? Brother, you have heard their cries. This is not 
the paradise they hoped for. Even so, they don't know where they should be heading. That's why I had to become the lone star in the sky to guide them. Even if that star must hang in a perpetual night of solitude. Hey, yeah, you bitch. Let's play our own. Let the show begin. All day. I hit the mark. Ah. Uh, the dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Still waters of uplifting. Keep up with me. Wake up. Spend freely. Not. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to finish this shit. I ain't gonna work, heck no. Listen up. I ain't gonna work, boy. The will of the weak. Yeah. Yes. I'll take the lead. Wake up. Let's play our let the show begin. <laughs> the dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Destined for oblivion. I wait for the departed. It too shall fall. It's on me. Keep up with me. That's better. Trust. The weakness of humanity cannot be redeemed by others. Another journey begins. Spend freely. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Weakness is not defined by you. Yeah, show them. I'm still watering. I'll take the lead. Listen up. Let's play our own. Let the show begin. Enough time. Have a noble soul. Don't be shackled by the past. Yeah. Destiny for oblivion. Watch your head. Just, just a little something. Think nothing. Don't worry. It's just a secret. Head your bets. It's on me. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Disorderly noise. Keep up with me. Wake up. Noisy. I'm still water. Oblivion. Disorderly. I wait for the departed. <laughs> it too shall fall. All things are part of the melody. I'm all in. Eternal prayer. <laughs> still the same old. Sure, I'll play along. Let the show begin. 
Champion. Destiny for oblivion. I hit the mark. Spin freely. Keep up with me. Listen up. Watch it! The dice have been cast. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off! All in! <laughs> Free will, or was it fate? Just, just a little something. Think nothing of you. Don't worry, it's just a scrape. Still water's up, Lydia. Oh, well, we're almost there with this bullshit. No dirty tricks. Time for a shot. Now, another journey begins. Dusty for oblivion. I weep for the heart. Come on. It did not fall. If we had never experienced solitude, how could we have embarked on different paths? Now, our final talk has concluded. Oh, shoot. All the work of creation has been completed. The inevitable day has arrived. The embryo of philosophy will reshape for us all of reality! Oh, shoot. Paradise can save more people. Sever my path with your hands. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. All right. I swear. All right. Wake up. May I honor you? Not each other. day All right. my son. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh, shoot. Well, good thing I got shield. Free will, or was it fate? I'll take the lead. Listen up. It's on me. Desire for order. You want to achieve the perfect outcome? The order is not the only choice. Your happiness is changing your life. in defying the nihility that life offers. Naughty child, nap time. Still waters of oblivion. I'll take the bus. The dice have the bus. All right, we're trying to finish this bitch. Wake up. Free will, or was it just a for me? I'm very shocked. I'll be back. Play long. Spin freely. I swear. I'll take the lead. I swear. Another journey begins. Still waters of oblivion. I swear. We're not gonna make it. <laughs> I swear.
I already got the shield, so it shouldn't matter. Hedge your bets. Destined for oblivion. I swear on the calendar. Wake up. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. That'll take more than next time. Oh, so me. Keep up with me. The dice have bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. All right. I weep for the department. You're almost done, you bastards. Yeah. yeah. Because someday we will wake up from our dreams. In the first year of the AE-2158, a fiery conspiracy erupted in the land of the dreams, but soon faded in chaos and destruction. Whispers carried the tale of those fateful 48 system hours, when a sun teetered on the precipice of collapse, a paradise stood on the brink of destruction, and a world was poised to surrender to its new master. Amidst it all, a body decayed, a pack of vultures gathered, and a brother and sister were doomed for eternal separation. And so, an eon succumbed to slumber once more. Some celebrated this fall, while others mourned. Among the insignificant witnesses, mere specks in the vast tapestry of the universe, it was said that this time, the Eon met their demise with dignity. As the cosmos bathed in the radiance of a pure dawn, a tempestuous storm brewed on the horizon, the chant of everything for the Amber Lord grew ever louder. Yet, no matter how one contemplates it, time inexorably swings Klopot's colossal hammer in eternal cycles. The tale of the Astral Express reaches both its conclusion and a new beginning. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Okay, where are we now? Brother, do you think the stars will fade away? Where did that come all of a sudden? Because the constellation that looks like a bird, the... Torrent Eagles looks a bit dim lately. <laughs> it's the Torment Eagles. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just it's located in the inner ring of Pentacony and can only be seen when spring and summer overlap. As for the question you asked, I think stars do die, just like people. But do you know, sister? No star actually belongs to the present. 
The light we see from them is from a long time ago. Even after the stars perish, their light will travel millions of light years, spanning countless years, to illuminate the night sky of another world. In our paradise, I believe there will be a star like that, shining with the same light. Its radiance will last forever, and its name will be happiness. No, not just one star. We should have two stars. Or maybe even more. Yeah, you're right. It's a deal! It's a deal, then. This is our promise. And nothing will sway our ideals. Yeah, you bet! Yeah, then it. Okay, for real? Why are they showing this? Again. <laughs> oh, more people here. I think we have to wait for this, huh? Yeah, yeah. now it's a pleasure to hear your voice again congratulations you've become the biggest winner of this festival oh the jade girl are you calling just to poke fun at me oh after oh, i can't oh, i can't say his name no i'm just impressed not only did you venture alone into Penacony and discover the truth of dreamflux reef but you also managed to escape with the help of that night of beauty. Ooh. Remember the recording you received from your Trailblaze friend? It's now the most valuable chip in this game. However, this came at a high cost. Losing a cornerstone is a hefty price to pay. Diamond just called a meeting to discuss what to do with you. Just as I expected. So is Diamond planning to demote me? Or kick me out of the Ten Stone Hearts? <laughs> Why don't you take a wild guess? Well, alright. Then I'll guess. He's going to promote me to P46. Oh, really? Alright. What will you wager? Are we talking about a real bet here? <laughs> I don't want to wager anything just to escape your clutches. But if it's just a friendly bet, I'll put on the line what I did when we first met. I'll bet my life, ma'am. Interesting. But since it's Diamond's call, no one can predict the outcome. 
I'm on my way to Pentagoni. Once everyone is settled, we'll return to Pier Point for the final showdown. Sounds like I'll be out of the action for a while. Finally, a chance to kick back and relax? Yeah. Leave everything to me and Topaz, child. Thanks to you, as soon as the Jade Stone was delivered to the family's compound, we finished up our preparations. The seeds we planted have taken root. Soon, it'll be time to reap the rewards. Huh? Come on at the door. Let's wrap it up for now. Looks like I've got a visitor here. Oh, so many surprises today. Didn't expect a Galaxy Ranger and wanted criminal to show up here. One who managed to take out two IPC members under the noses of our fleet. Do you understand what that means? Screw Wubba Boo, I just put him to sleep. Don't try to intimidate me with that nonsense. Besides, I've taken down more IPC lackeys than the residual value you squeezed. And I don't mind adding a few more zeros to my wanted poster. I have a question for you. Be honest, or I don't mind putting a bullet into your head. Oh, shit. Is a swallow Snyder. Ooh, who's that? To be continue. Oh, you got an it like that? Oh. Oh man, that was a long one. Stay tuned to find out what happens next of the oncoming. Yeah. Jesus, that was long. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Alright guys, that's the end of the video right there. If you want more whole Kai Star Will subscribe to the channel. Leave a like and comment down below and tell me what you guys think about this long ass video about uh, whole Kai Star Wills. And I'll see you guys again until the next future of this game.